at this point, I wondered why my locomotive stopped moving. So today we're going to be playing a game where I'm going to try to assemble a train based on a consist of a randomized order based on some shuffled cards. So this is a U Pacific Building America auto rack, and if you don't know what an auto rack is, it's basically a rail car that transports cars inside of it, so there's multi-levels in it. And this is a river counter model, so it's very well detailed. And if we take a look on the other side, you know, it just looks like I rewinded the video, it just looks exactly the same. Just maybe the underside plumbing is different, that's all I can tell. And here's what it looks like on the end, very well detailed with the doors. Of course, this has no interior, so you're just gonna look at that. And here's what it looks like on the other end, pretty similar as well. It is actually a relatively light car for its size. So if you take a look on the roof, there is some nice metal ribbing going all the way across. While on the bottom, there's some nice air brake line detail. It goes actually all the way across just a really long skinny pipe. And the bogies look good as well. So here's the operator version of the auto rack, and this is a Norfolk Southern one. You can see it looks different from the rivet counter since like the metal, they're actually made of a different material, I believe. So it's less shiny, it's more like a dull gray color. And here's a view of the other side. Now operator, they're designed to be budget friendly, so they're cutting costs to make it more affordable, so they include less detail. Here's what it looks like on the end, and you can see it's obviously missing something because there's these holes there, and that's where the metal bars are supposed to be. And here's a view of the other side. You can see also on the bottom, they don't have the air brake hose or the cut lever. And here's what the roof looks like. Again, it's just metal ripping. Not much to actually put there. But on the bottom, you can see there is some air brake detail there, but it's not as much as the rivet counter. And now we're gonna take a look at them both side by side. Now, U Pacific, their yellow is actually a bit different than Norfolk Southern. It's a lot more brighter. And also the rivet counter, you can see the metal, it just shines nicely. It's like made of chrome or something. I really like how the design looks like. Well, compared to operator, you know, it's a bit more flat looking. And the tiny holes in the sheets are really like depressions, not actual holes. Having these two side by side makes it clear what the difference is between operator and rivet. You can see they're missing the metal bars, as well as the couple of cut lever, all the air brake line hose. And also this little thing, I never really noticed it, but <laughs> apparently it is missing from the top. Now here's what it looks like on the bottom, and one thing that I didn't know was going to be different is the TTX logo. They're actually different sizes. The yeah, Pacific one is a lot larger. And as you can see, the operator is missing all that underbody detailing that the rivet counter has, especially at the ends. Another cool thing that rivet counter has is rotating bearing caps on the wheels. So you can see the axles, they actually do move, although it is kind of hard to see on camera. at this point I wondered why my locomotive stopped moving and that's because apparently there's too many switches so I moved the feeder track closer and it worked fine.
So today we're going to be playing a game where I'm going to try to assemble a train based on a consist of a randomized order based on some shuffled cards. So we'll have a bunch of cards over here, CSX Coal Hopper right there. Basically a card for every single rail car that I have. And I got this idea from England Excitings, which is a British model railway shunting puzzle game. But they do require wagons for that, which are the same length and I don't have that. So I'm just making my own version and I'm going to just arrange them. So we're going to make the train in this order. All right, so first we have a UP Autorack, a tank car. UP Hopper, CSX Coal Hopper, NS Autorack, CN Boxcar, Frisco Hopper, TTX Boxcar. Alright, so the first car was the Union Pacific Autorack, and that was actually pretty easy since it's already the first car right behind the locomotive. Next car, tank car, that's gonna be a bit more tricky since it's behind a couple other cars in the back. Alright, so here I tried to get the tank car in the consist. And I wasn't really thinking about it because it's not supposed to be at the very end. I should have just left it right there. So I ended up putting it in a different siding and then I'll pick up the tank car later once I get rid of these other hoppers. Now I looked at the cards again and there was like a CSX coal hopper next to the Union Pacific hopper. And I thought, oh, I already have the Union Pacific hopper at the end. So I just left them together in the other siding. Now that I have a Frisco at the end, I saw that it was next to the TTX boxcar, so I just paired them up together. Alright, so now we can finally fetch our tank car that we left before. Alright, so that is our second car in consist. And after the tank car is the UP hopper and the CSX coal hopper, which we just placed together already. So that's going to be easy, just go back to that siding and pick it up. Alright, so after the coal hopper, there is a Norfolk Southern Autorack. So that is going to be in the other siding, just pick that up. That is easy as well. Alright, after that is the Canadian National Boxcar. Now that's a bit tricky since it's in the back. So I was supposed to put the Frisco and the TTX Boxcar in another siding just to move it out of the way. But unfortunately, I got the Canadian National Boxcar at the end. So I have to go back and leave it there. So I left the TTX Boxcar and the Frisco in another siding. And picked up the Canadian National Boxcar. Alright, the last two cars are the Frisco Hopper and the TTX Boxcar, which I already left in that siding before, so finally we're going to be completing our consist.
So for my final thoughts, I think Scale Trains did a pretty good job on these auto racks. Rivet counter versus the operator. Of course, Rivet counter, it has a lot more detail, costs a lot more, but you know, I think it is worth it because it has that nice metallic sheen. I do like how it looks like, but you know, operator is good on the other hand. If you're just interested in operating these, these actually roll pretty good since they don't have the rotating berry cap, which is realistic, but you know, it's not going to roll as smooth. If you are planning on getting these, I definitely recommend the Union Pacific Auto Rack. I think it has the best color scheme out of them all. And right now on scalechains.com, they're actually like out of stock of the Union Pacific ones. So they are a lot higher in demand. And that's actually where I got it from, scalechains.com. I actually pre-ordered them. So it's a lot better to pre-order these things because sometimes things will get out of stock really fast. As for the shunting game, I feel like I could have done a lot better being more efficient with my moves, but it was, you know, pretty fun to do, and hopefully one day I could try the real Ingle Nook sightings game. But anyways, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, hit the like button down below, subscribe if you had already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later. So I also picked up this Kado 16V HO scale power supply. Now this is because when I bought this extra power pack to run trains on a second track, I had some problems running a scale trains locomotives, although Atherin, they actually run fine with it. So I got this one since it has more voltage. It says 16 volts, but actually if you read on the adapter, it says 17, so that's a bit weird. <laughs> it's a little bit higher too than the original one uh, I got for the HM1 starter pack. It's like 0.1 amps higher. So I thought I'd let you guys know if you run into this situation, get the proper HO scale power supply.